What's up guys, my name is Burai and in this 3 part series I'm going to go on a comparison run again, this time on the Aqua of the Back arc from Index Season 3. This video is going to be tackling Episode 7 and Volume 6 of the Light Novel. Now some key points before we jump into the video, the timeline of this arc is set around the same time as the Dream Ranker arc from the Railgun series, which is slightly mentioned at the end of that arc. This arc also marks Kanzaki once again becoming the leader of the Amakusa style church, as well as Misaka confronting Toma about his memory loss, pivoting her to become someone he can rely on, most notably in the New Testament series, as well as a clear understanding of her feelings towards a certain boy. So to start things off, I'll skim through the prologue really quick, and I might skip some minor changes time to time to try and summarize all the differences from the light novel to the anime, which is kind of a lot. The prologue of the story, in essence, talks about the Pope's experience with the Archbishop of the Angelican Church, Laura Stewart, and Kenzaki, one of the great saints. He talks about how sincere the Archbishop is with the people, equality all around. While back at Rome, the Pope does not feel the same equality that the Word of God was supposed to demonstrate. So let's get straight to the anime. Episode 7 starts off the same as the light novel. Team level zeros are out of bread because of a certain unlucky someone had to ask a teacher a question. The light novel does tell us though what he asked and apparently it was, if Oda Nobunaga created the Oda Shogunate, what would Japan be like now? I did try to search this up to see what he meant by this question since the history teacher got sidetracked with this and actually there's a lot of debate I saw on the online forum. Now I know why the teacher got so distracted. The anime also skipped over a scene where Kamijo went to Loli Sensei and complained about the food getting sold out. That didn't work, mostly because Loli Sensei was eating a soba set mid complain so she didn't care as long as she had her share. It gets kinda sad cause Boy Unlucky was willing to make some leftover meal with the cold powder like cheese or some ketchup. The anime continues with a group of misfits creating a plan to go to the local convenience store to get their lunch, with the light novel adding that Tsuchimikado made a detailed map of the school, with locations of all the alarms in the school. The light novel also adds that the band of misfits had pride in Toma. To be the bait. Fast forwarding a bit, Toma gets chased down by the gorilla sensei, a few seconds later, Itsuwa smacks the gorilla down with her spear she assembled from her bag. And with that, cue anime intro. A bit after the anime intro, we get to hear from Itsuwa that she thought an assassin was chasing Toma. But in the light novel, however, she thought it was Aqua of the Back, one of the members of God's Right Seat. Now, there is one part in the light novel that explains why Aqua plans to fight Boy Unlucky. Aqua sent a letter to Anglican Church and the higher ups of Academy City, stating that he was going to crush Toma to dust and that they must be prepared to use all their power. Along with the letter, the corpse of Terra of the Left was with it. Well, half of it at least. Apparently only half of the body was sent because Terra was cleanly cut in half at the waist. This made the letter that Aqua sent a legit challenge letter. Itsuwa feeling guilty because she couldn't protect Toma the last time they were together, wanted to use this excuse to be motivated to be her best self. The light novel states as well that this event could be the tipping point between the Academy City Anglican Church Alliance versus the Roman Catholic Russian Orthodox Church Alliance. Skipping past the Amakusa style church peeps and their theories on the big breasts with the use of sore shoulder index, which I don't know why these people even study this. Anyway, Beardy Beardy walks down the steps with the thought of Toma's memory loss going through her head. The anime does cut out a big chunk of her internal dialogue. Biri Biri tries to think back to when Toma could have lost his memory, thinking that he seemed okay during the Daiha Seisai tournament. She thought it could have been the time where he interacted with the sisters and Accelerator. She did think of a way, however, that could fix his situation, and that is mental out. She didn't want to resort to this, however, because she would be in debt to someone who she didn't trust at all. Theoretically, from Biri Biri's point of view, Mental out could alter Toma's memory. The more she tries to think about it, the more it frustrates her. The internal dialogue then ends with Biribiri catching the pontiff of Amakusa style church doing a penalty kick from the side, with an intermission at Boy Fukoda's residence, mostly just setting the tone for the main arc's location. We go straight to the trio driving towards District 22, with some extra notes from the light novel stating that Itsuwa was at least their sugar mama or housewife. Now, let me get this straight. She has all the information about Academy City. She could drive almost any vehicle and has tons and tons of cash, which she says it's all from the military funding. Let's go, Sugar Mama. Their drive around District 22 is more clearly detailed in the light novel, with mostly just having Itsuwa act like their personal tour guide. 
so let's speed things up just a bit. The next scene in the anime has Biri Biri do what she does best. Collect more Gekota merch. And what better way to do that than at a bathhouse. The light novel does add some detail to Biri Biri for those who want to know more about her. There are three bath compartments in the bathhouse and Biri Biri over here isn't too fond of baths that were too hot. So among the three baths, she heads to the most kitty looking one. And lo and behold, she meets up with Index and Itsuwa. Enter bath scene. One minor detail that was overlooked was when she was thinking about Toma's amnesia. The light novel states that she does piece together that no one else knows about his memory loss, especially the nun in green eyes. One paramedic later and we have Toma outside enjoying his black boss coffee, with another minor detail that I wanted to add from the light novel. Before Itsuwa steps out of the bathhouse, Toma does think over about the deep organization, God's right seat, as well as Aqua of the back, thinking that this could all be a bluff. When Itsuwa invites Toma for a walk, there is some dialogue that was removed from the anime. Their conversation was about the Amakusa style church and how they moved from Japan to England and how they were able to adjust being with the Anglican church. Toma knew on the other hand that the Amakusa would act on their own and if something went wrong, they would be abandoned like a lizard's tail. The dialogue also goes on to talk about the special skill of the Amakusa, which is blending into any environment. Going past that and onto the next dialogue with the substitute pontiff and company, they talk about why the three sides surrounding Toma want him. This being Academy City, the Anglican Church, and the Roman Catholic Church. One detail I do wish the anime didn't cut out was the reason the Amakusa wanted to protect Toma. Not because he is their savior, but because he's also their comrade. The dialogue in the light novel ends the same way as the anime, noticing how everybody disappears except those in the Amakusa. Some additional dialogue was also removed between Toma and Itsuwa, but the summary of it was mostly about being wary about Aqua and the rest of God's Right Sea. I wanted to point that out because after rewatching this episode, it makes it seem like Toma doesn't care about the situation, but in reality in the light novel, he does show interest because he doesn't want anyone else to get hurt. Speeding to a few minutes later, an Aqua arrives, with the light novel making it seem more terrifying. It describes his entrance like so. These footsteps didn't sound human. Every time the person took a step, PAM, the metal bridge below slightly tremored. One thing about the oppressive weight was that it could all be considered as a countdown to death. After a few moments, Toma and Aqua faced off. Well, at least in the light novel. The anime skips the initial fight scene between them, showing the extreme difference in power. Toma thought he could do something since he was able to see through Vento and Terra, but Aqua was on a whole different level. The anime shows Toma getting hit once, but the light novel details that he got hit by Aqua's weapon of choice, a 5 meter long unknown object. In shape, it was the lance of a European knight, but in reality, it was a huge umbrella created from a steel structure used to construct the building with. Aqua tried to strike down Toma and missed thanks to Itsuwa throwing her bag in between Aqua's weapon and Toma, but the attack created an aftershock and it made Toma flow back several meters with his back hitting one of the metal frames that supported the bridge. It seemed like an RPG where the difference was over a hundred levels. The light novel then lines up back with the anime, with Itsuwa waking up to the smell of rust and blood, and a body lying on the bridge. The anime shows Itsuwa trying to heal Toma, but before that, in the light novel, Aqua was standing right there. But she didn't want to see him, she wanted to try and heal Toma. When she finally noticed that there was nothing she could do, she let out a scream. Aqua walked closer to a fallen Itsuwa, lifted his foot before stepping on her back. He then raised his weapon and tried to slam it down on Toma, but Itsuwa on the brink of consciousness was standing between Toma and Aqua. Thoughts came into her head. She didn't want that person to die. She didn't want that person to be taken away. She wanted to stand up again and protect this person. She was ready to die for this person. But what broke her will wasn't Aqua's blow but the soft palm of a certain boy that was placed on her shoulder. The light novel then lightens up back with the anime again, with Toma diving headfirst straight into the enemy. The anime cuts off the same way chapter 1 of the light novel ended. Just. One. Day. Now this does end episode 7 of the anime, as well as chapter 1 of volume 16 of the light novel. Now to give you an overview of what I'm going to be talking about in the next few videos, Episode 8 is going to be covering chapter 2 of volume 16 of the light novel, with episode 9 covering chapters 3, 4, and 5 of the light novel. Now there is some bonus information I want to talk about, but I might talk about it in more detail at the end of part 3. 
At the end of each chapter, there's an epilogue that talks about the background story of a certain character. And I don't want to talk about it yet because this could be a spoiler for this arc, as well as the future arc, which is going to be the British royal family arc, I think. So I will be talking about that in the third part of this series. So please watch out for that because it's also very important. Anyway guys, I think that's it for now. I will see you guys in the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Ciao!